Hey everyone, uh, so today I'm going to be, as mentioned, uh, discussing on this topic which is accelerated mobile pages and discussing my journey in how I augmented my own site using AMP. So I'll be discussing my learning journey as well as some of the pain points that I've uh, experienced along the way. So hopefully if you're motivated to do this for your own site or for your own projects, you won't meet these obstacles as well. My name is Wei Yuan and let's get started. Okay, so let's first start by establishing a basic understanding on what exactly is AMP. I'm going to start off with showing this video uh, to you on how AMP is being used today. Ooh, okay, let me set it full screen and start from the beginning. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay, so starting from the beginning, so you start off with some mobile browser. You'll go to a search engine that supports AMP, for example, Google search. You type in some keywords, you search for it, okay? And you see you get a list of results over here. So, for example, on the top result, I have uh, Reddit, a result from Reddit. And you can see that there's this lightning icon beside it. So over here, where my cursor is, okay? So this shows that Reddit supports AMP, okay? But what does this exactly mean? Okay, so let's see. If I click this link, what should happen? Okay. So as expected, a new view is rendered. But the more interesting thing is that, okay, so this thing is a little bit dark over here, but I hope you can see that at the top part, the host is still on google.com. So this shows that, you know, when you're using AMP, you're actually not fetching the results directly from a site, but you are fetching it from Google's own AMP cache. Okay, so traversing from this cached page, you can actually get to the actual site by going through some of the mechanisms of this cache page, uh, clicking a link and you'll get to that page. So the cache page, as well as, uh, as compared to the actual page, is actually two different HTML pages. Okay. So for mobile users, this is how you would see or use AMP. Okay. So that's how you use it, but what's the underlying technology for AMP? So AMP, I would describe it as a web component framework. So not just a web framework, but web components. So I'll discuss about components later on. And it's done for optimizing user experience in terms of making page loading a lot better for users. So this is done through establishing a few measures. For example, you uh, just now, as I mentioned, using the AMP cache or establishing behaviors like making sure that the site does not introduce blocking JavaScript as well as CSS rules from preventing the DOM from rendering. And one important thing I need to emphasize is that in the AMP page, the page that is cached, the HTML specification is not the same as the regular HTML specification. What I mean by this is that some of the HTML elements cannot be introduced inside your AMP HTML because it will be regarded as not valid and the search, uh, search engine, the bots will not cache this page. Okay, so now that we have understand what exactly is M, I would like to try and convince you, you know, why you should use M. So we'll look at, you know, for user point of view, you know, why, why should they use M? And for the developers and companies, you know, why should you integrate this piece of technology? Okay, so as established earlier on, better user experience, faster loading speeds, uh, in terms for the user, you know, this means better perceived latency, better latency overall, okay? Uh, but there's another sad fact for users, which is if you are using a mobile phone, you're using Google search, you can't really choose, you know, they're just gonna give you the M results, whether you like it or not. Okay, beyond that, so what about for the developers and organizations, you know, why should you implement this? Okay, one of the biggest things, you know, regarding websites today, web applications that we build, search engine optimization. So this is a screen grab I got from Google's blog uh, on, and this was published in July, no July, January 2018, okay? Where they mentioned about the inclusion of uh, mobile page speed being part of the search ranking. Okay, so by implementing AMP, what you want to do is optimize your page loading speeds. So to be able to get a more stronger search ranking score, allowing your site to appear higher in the search results. And this is especially important. You know, when you look at other statistics, mobile traffic, you know, throughout the entire internet is actually growing. In fact, at the end of this year, it's projected to be reaching up to 80%. And if we are looking at just AMP alone, you know, you want to concentrate on the search engines that support AMP. So I have this interesting statistic here between June of 2018 and June 2019, 
where you can see that 95.58% of all traffic goes through Google search. So you can see that just from one single vendor alone, because they support EMP, and if you integrate EMP within your own site, you should be able to leverage you know, on the benefits provided by this technology. Okay, so before I go on any further in trying to convince you, I have to point in a very sort of counterintuitive point, which is that if your page is already superbly optimized, you know, it's so fast, less than 100 kilobytes, load than in less than 100 milliseconds, for example, there's no point for you to implement AMP. Why is that? Because in setting up the AMP framework, you need to load some scripts from uh, the AMP, this setting up the AMP framework, basically. So this might actually cause your page to perform worse overall. Okay? Another problem is that this is a technology that's geared towards mobile users. So if your targeted users is mainly desktop users, then you shouldn't look at implementing this. Okay? And beyond the dollars and cents reasoning of trying to you know, say why I should implement uh, AMP, I think in some part as a developer, you know, I did this to my own site. I felt it was a very fun way of me to learn a new web technology. And in some sense, I would argue that, I mean, kind of raises your profile. If people search for your site on Google, they'll see that you, know, you have this lightning uh, badge over there. It's like a badge of honor. And one very compelling point for me is that it was very easy to set up this technology, integrating with my own site. I started at around 3 p.m. You know, on some Sunday afternoon. And by 7 p.m. on the same day, I managed to build a prototype for my homepage upload it, you know, deploy it, and requested uh, bots you know, through Google search engine to index that site. Okay? And when I searched my site through uh, the mobile view, I was able to see that it was already cached in Google's AMP cache. So I hope I've convinced you so far in terms of the usefulness of AMP. Let us now move towards you know, how do I integrate my products with AMP. Okay, so the first thing I would suggest with is starting with some sort of architecture pattern. Uh, these are terms that I've ooh, these are terms that I've taken from the Next.js framework, uh, but the reasoning goes beyond that framework. So you can start with either the hybrid or M only pattern. And what I mean by that is that under hybrid, you're looking at one single view template in serving both the humans and bots that are crawling your page. So for the humans, let's say you're visiting a path called uh, users. Uh, for the bots, they will visit the same page, but they will set a query parameter, uh, such as AMP, setting it as true. And then from your web framework, you need to be able to understand that flag and render only valid AMP components. Uh, for M only page, you would uh, sort of decouple that as two different templates and render those views separately. And both of these approaches have their pros and cons. Uh, if you're doing hybrid, you are coupling a lot of these components together, but it's one single view template, maybe it's easier to ramp up. Uh, if you're using M only, you have two templates, but everything is decoupled, so it might be cleaner in some ways. And once you have decided your pattern, you want to start to look at building a layout. So it's similar to web frameworks that we use today where you build a layout for any of your views. You know, a lot of these components should be just declared once. You don't need to declare it uh, time after time for every single page. And what I can suggest is you can go to the documentation of AMP, grab some of the uh, information there and then augment it to what you need. So this is what I created from there. And what I would suggest is after creating a layout, uh, it will be very helpful if you validate, make sure that that layout is uh, considered as valid AMP HTML. Because if you start migrating your other views onto you know, this AMP HTML, you might not be able to know whether it's your layout failing or your, your templates or your partials that are failing. Okay. Okay, so going back, so now that we've talked about the base pattern, the layouts, I think the next thing we want to look at is actually migrating, you know, the views. You know, let's say I want to visit the user's path in its M, you know, the, the mode that the bots are supposed to visit and cache. Uh, we need to start looking at moving those components over. But is it at, this, at this point that I started like meeting this uh, roadblock, that when I saw that, so, there was something that I saw on the EMP documentation. It's something similar to this, which is that you can't use script tags. So you, that means you can't write JavaScript code and you can't use script tags to include JavaScript files, as well as you can't load CSS, uh, external CSS style sheets. So I don't know, like uh, for web developers out there, I mean, the basic point of your web application is to be able to uh, select or rather visually present how elements look like 
and the behavior of the web application itself. And if you can't do scripts, you can't do styles, like what can you do with this AMP? So basically, it's a problem at the start. Okay, let's try and solve it one by one. So for styling, you can't load external style sheets, but what you can do is load it as inline style text. So there are some rules that, rules that you have to follow, which is you can't go more than 50 kilobytes of uh, CSS within the rendered page itself. Okay, so for styling, it's relatively easy to solve. What about scripting? There are a few ways around it. You could solve it by using AMP components. So I mentioned earlier on, AMP is a web component framework. So you want to look at using the components to resolve that problem instead. So some examples of components. Uh, so this one is not really to describe the, the replacement of some scripted behavior, but rather to establish what is considered as valid AMP HTML. So on the right, you can see that you have an image tag and a video tag. Those are considered as valid HTML elements. But if you were to use it in AMP, they will actually tell you that these are not valid at all. So you need to replace it with the AMP image and AMP video components. Okay. And in replacing script, uh, behaviors that you want to script within your page, I would say one common example is if you want to set up analytics. I'm sure uh, most of us would have uh, maybe used some form of like Google Analytics, for example. You can use the AMP analytics tag, uh, configure it to uh, behave the same as what you would do for loading uh, Google Analytics. And what about visual components? You could use things like AMP sidebar if you want to emulate the sidebar component you know, within your regular site, within this M view. Okay, so example on how a sidebar, this M sidebar will look like. So I have this code pen over here. So if I click this button, you will see this sidebar coming up. So this is essentially what is provided for by the framework. Okay, and if you look at the HTML markup over here, so all I've done is just include the resource required for loading the AMP sidebar. There's no other scripts uh, loaded here. And basically you just provide the markup for AMP sidebar. So that's it. Okay, so no JavaScript required here. Okay, so what if AMP components are not to your flav uh, flavor? You want to use some other approach instead. Okay, you can use iframes that could solve the problem. You serve the resources from other paths and you load it within your current AMP page. Uh, another way, this one was recently released uh, around two weeks ago, where you can actually use the AMP script tag instead. So, uh, so in a way, I mean, I'm not trying to lie, you know, in the earlier part where I say you can't load scripts, but uh, you can actually use this to insert some limited form of scripts within your page. Okay, so we've talked about uh, how you can set up AMP within your projects. I hope I've convinced you at the earlier part. I just want to give some tips uh, to make your journey in implementing this a lot more easier. And the first tip is to use Google Search Console to establish ownership of your site. And by doing this, it makes it a lot easy for your site to be discovered because if you don't uh, use Google Search Console, you can't do things like requesting them to uh, crawl your site. So you have to wait for them to, the bots to go to other sites and discover your sites through you know, other content. And another good thing is that there's actually some monitoring tools that is introduced on the search console to show you if your pages are still considered as valid AMP HTML. So if things break, you could look, at, look for it towards here and see you know, what you should fix. Okay, the second tip, um, just like I say, I like Bing, but um, problem here is that uh, I tried to integrate with this with Bing and then I found out there were some problems with Bing, which is that the, they only introduced this technology within uh, the US as well as only introducing this technology within a limited component within the page. So you can see this screenshot over here, the center part, there's this news carousel. Okay? So this is the only part within the page that supports AMP so far. If you are not uh, representing some huge corporation where you can get featured very easily, uh, it's very hard to validate whether your AMP content is working there. So I would not advise to go this path. I, I tried for like a few days until I find out about this. So it was kind of painful. Uh, and the last tip, to build a robust CI, for example, if you are integrating your AMP components as part of your web application, you know, time to time, uh, it's inevitable that some of your pages might fail. So you want to check and make sure that AMP pages continuously, you know, they are uh, still valid you know, as you add new features in. So you can use this tool called AMP Validator, which is a node module. And yeah, I wish you guys the best of luck. If I, I hope I've motivated some of you to look at uh, implementing EMP. I think for myself, it was really exciting. 
over the course of an afternoon, being able to implement AMP and then like have my content featured something on, on as, something as big as Google. So yeah, if that I've reached the end. If I, yeah, don't think there's any time for questions. But yeah, sorry. Okay, we'll do questions after. I guess if there's any questions, thank you.